The story is just a, a travesty of journalism. It, it really is, and they know it. And, and I hope that by this action, the plane dealer is sufficiently embarrassed to, to redress the situation. Teamster President Jackie Pressure has been much in the news lately. Friday, his office was raided. Yesterday, plane dealer reporters and management became embroiled over an article in the paper that's being called a retraction of previous charges made in the PD. Don Webster talked today with Jackie Presser about both issues. Jackie Presser is with us this afternoon. Jackie, of course, is vice president of the Teamsters Union and uh, secretary treasurer, I believe, of the, uh, the local. Jackie and the plane dealer yesterday morning they uh, printed a story retracting, in effect, charges that they had made a year ago, alleging that you were involved in a kickback scheme. Uh, the Justice Department has uh, since dropped those charges. In that story, uh, plain dealer reporters talked to uh, two or three people who uh, you and your attorneys have uh, said are unreputable and have documented this with uh, information from the Justice Department. Is that That's right? correct. That wasn't a story that they ran yesterday. That was a retraction that they ran. Uh, retracting the statements that they made 13 months ago with respect to the kickbacks and the informant. And uh, we provided them with enough. Uh, my attorney, John Klamacko, has been meeting with the uh, Cleveland Plain Dealer Publishing attorneys for the past 13 months. And uh, prior to my filing a massive libel suit, uh, the conclusion was reached between the Cleveland Publishing attorneys, the uh, Plain Dealer Publishing attorneys, and my attorney that a retraction would be acceptable, and uh, we did get a front-page retraction yesterday, vindicating my father and myself. That retraction was actually written by David Hopcraft, the executive editor of the Cleveland Plain Dealer. It wasn't written by the reporters who worked on the story. Yesterday afternoon, there was a demonstration at the Plain Dealer with reporters, photographers, and uh, all the members of the Guild uh, saying, in fact, that they still sided with the reporters, and the reporters were telling the truth, and that a retraction was not uh, was not indicated. How do you comment? Well, I, uh, I, I can only say that uh, the reporters that work at the Plain or any other paper simply write the stories, but the stories are edited and published by the publishers and the editors of the newspaper. And I haven't got any argument whatsoever with the newspaper guild. Uh, our, our suit was going to be filed against the uh, Cleveland Plain Dealer Publishing Company, and uh, uh, I, I had no time nor my attorney at any time questioned whether or not the, the reporters did this or did that. Uh, the responsibility of the articles that were written and published 13 months ago are those of the Cleveland Plain Dealer Publishing Company. All right. Now, you say that the, um, the story yesterday vindicated you. That was a As a matter of fact, Don, I have here in my possession a letter from the Justice Department signed by Davis Margolis. He's the Chief Organizing Crime and Racketeering Section Criminal Division of the U.S. Justice Department stipulating that the case is closed without prosecution. Now, was that case really closed because of lack of evidence, or did the statute of limitations come into the picture? The, 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 well, if, the, if that was the case, then you're saying that 13 months ago when they published the story, the articles absolutely and positively stated that all of this took place in 1973 and 1974. So then, in reality, then up to statute of limitations was a question, they should have never published it to begin with because there was no prosecution at that time, nor has there been for the past 10 years when this story originally was heard in front of a grand jury in New York City, and everybody was cleared then and there was no indictments issued. All right, if that case is closed, what happened Friday when the organized crime strike force closed down Teamsters Local 507 for 12 hours and carted off a carton after carton of records. Nobody could get in, nobody could get out. What were those records, and what were they after? Well, Don, when you say they left themselves with cartons and cartons of records, they walked in with 10 cartons. When they left, they gave us a receipt that they took out of that building, 16 pieces of paper this size, three bound books that size that they've had access to for the past 13 months, and a, and a, and a plastic bag that they stuffed with paper for the benefit of the media. And Are you saying that the organized strike force is putting on a show? Absolutely. I'm saying it right to you and to the general public. And if they're not putting on a show, they're going to have to produce the evidence that they took out because we have the receipts that they signed for. You say evidence. What type of evidence is that? There what was no the evidence. For? They took out blank pieces of paper. They took out 16 pieces of paper this size. 
that, that we have had a subpoena, an open subpoena for through our attorneys representing the local union and myself that they've had access to by court order for the past 13 months. And that issue of them coming in and invading our building and prohibiting the officers and employees and the membership of this community access to the shutting off of the telephones for 12 or 13 consecutive hours is going to be followed through by our attorneys and we're going to go to the Justice Department or to the Inspector General's office to just find out that if in America people could come down to this station, take control of it and keep you and the rest of the employees out without having any, any rhyme or reason to do such a thing. If what you say is true and they left with 16 pieces of blank paper, why did it take them 12 or 13 hours to do it? They'll have to answer that and they're going to have to give a valid answer of what they did. It was all a show, Don. Why do you think this investigation is continuing or is this a new investigation? You've had your problems with uh, the Labor Department, the Justice Department, IRS. Why are they picking on Jackie Presser? When you say I've had my problems, I've been doing this for 39 years in the city of Cleveland in the United States of America. Uh, I've been investigated by every department covering labor from the beginning of my career till today. I have never been arrested, I've never been indicted, and I've never been convicted of a crime. Is the crime that I'm a Teamster official? Is the crime that I'm Jackie Presser? What is the crime? Uh, there is no crimes. What is your next step now after Friday's investigation? My attorneys have advised me that I really shouldn't get into that discussion because they're going to take the appropriate steps. And at that time, when they institute those steps, I'll be happy to then give a statement as to what's really going to happen. Okay, thank you, Jackie. I'm sure we'll be hearing more of that. Eyewitness Newsreel looks back.